Good afternoon. My name is Cindy Speaker, and this is Indiana Law TV. My guest today is legal correspondent Carl Brizzy of Carl Brizzy Law. So welcome, Carl. Thanks for having me. Well, Carl, you've handled a lot of drunk driving cases and other things. You've been a prosecutor. What do you look for in a drunk driving case? What are the what are the elements of it that you, as an attorney, looks for as a basis to possibly defend your client? Well, as you said, I was the the prosecutor for Indianapolis for for eight for eight years and um, prosecuted. Uh, many drunk driving cases, defended many drunk driving cases, and the first thing that we ought to say about drunk driving, it is, it is easily the most preventable crime that there is. Um, so don't do it. You can avoid it. If you're going to drink, take a cab. Everybody's got an Uber app on their phone um, because not only is it uh, dangerous for you and others, it's also very expensive um, for all sorts of reasons. And, and so what happens when you when you get arrested for drunk driving is after those uh, field sobriety tests are performed and after you take the the portable uh, breathalyzer right. test, which you don't have to take, number one, there is no penalty for taking that. But if you think that you're close to the limit, um, you might want to take it because you might be under. So that's so that's the first thing. That, okay, that interesting. Test, Wait yeah. a minute. So you don't have to take the breathalyzer test. No, lots of people get confused about that um, portable that portable breath okay. test that we just saw there. Right, right. Um, the test that you have to take is the chemical test that's administered once you get back to the uh, police station. Okay. And if you don't take that test, then that's an automatic one year driver's license suspension. So a lot of people are confused about that. Um, and there's all sorts of different strategies and reasons why you would or wouldn't take the first portable one because that one's not admissible okay but we'll do another show about okay. that strategy um later on down the road but the first thing you want to do is obviously you don't want to panic if you get arrested and you want to hire uh, a good lawyer and the reason why you want to hire a good lawyer is because the stakes are very high as i said it's, it's expensive um you don't want that on your on your record it affects some people's employment right right and so you want to do everything you can to help level the playing field when the government's coming after you. Yeah, yeah. Now, when they t if, if at the scene they take your license, is that officially mean that your, your license is suspended and you can't drive at that point? It's an excellent question. No. Uh, when the police officer takes your license, if you have um, a duplicate license, or even if you go to the BMV and you can get a duplicate license, um, you are not officially suspended. The police can't actually suspend your driving privileges. Okay. Uh, the court can and, and the BMV can. And so uh, you wait, you can drive until you get a letter from the BMV officially suspending your driving privileges. Okay, and how long is that usually for when they suspend your driving privileges? So as of January of this year in Indiana, there is no more mandatory suspension. It can be anywhere from zero all the way up to two years. And what happens in most courts in Indiana, and every county is a little bit different and every judge is a little bit different, so I'm speaking in generalities, but um, typically the judge will make the suspension retroactive to when you were uh, when you received that administrative suspension from okay. the BMV. So typically in, in Indianapolis what will happen is the judge will put somebody under oath and say uh, how long has it been since you haven't driven and if the judge believes um, the person then that suspension is retroactive. So most of the time by the time you get uh, when you get through with the case right especially if you've negotiated uh, something so short of going to trial like a plea bargain mm -hmm. uh, your suspension is over. Okay. You know, it's interesting when you said about the, the ramifications. I uh, had heard someone talking about this woman had tried to get into medical school. She had had the DUI years before, but she didn't really defend it. She just accepted that consequence, and it kept her out of medical school. Wow. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe that, but, but she, she had no idea that what the consequences are and how that could affect her future. Yeah, and you have no idea how other people are going to react, right? Yeah. So if you have a pool of you know, 25 candidates all um, equally qualified and you're looking for ways or reasons to sure. call the herd, Yeah, you yeah. can just use that and say, well, so that person's got a prior conviction Absolutely. for operating while intoxicated. So yeah. you have to take it very seriously. And yeah. I know sometimes people think of these, these such an open and shut case because they've got the test. Well, the tests aren't always right. The science isn't always right. The people giving the test aren't always right. Um, the reasons for the stop always uh, are not always constitutional. So there are there are ways to uh, legally attack a drunk driving charge. And the reason why you hire a lawyer is you want to go through that analysis with somebody who knows what they're doing so that you, as a consumer, uh, can make 
a, uh, a the judgment right. about how you want to proceed with the case. Right. Is it defendable, or do we need to try and negotiate the best possible deal to mitigate the negative consequences? Yeah, yeah. Timely topic. It's um, you know it's one of those things people have been you know maybe driving buggies and riding horses you know yeah. while intoxicated you know 150 uh, yes. 200 years ago and yes. now it's cars yes. and maybe in 100 years it'll be <laughs> spaceships but maybe right. stuff will be able to drive itself with google yeah. right and then you won't have to worry <laughs> right. about it right now that's going to open a whole new can of worms when they get to google driven cars and things you just go to sleep take a nap. <laughs> right maybe there'll right. be a martini shaker actually in the car because you're not having to drive it <laughs> well thank you so much for your thank time you. today this is Cindy Speaker for Indiana Law TV.